fighting between Israel and Hamas is intensifying across Gaza as the humanitarian crisis worsens throughout the enclave. Israeli tanks and warplanes are carrying out new strikes in southern Gaza. Meanwhile, the Israeli officials say its forces are fighting fierce and difficult battles at several Hamas strongholds in the north. The clashes coincide with the IDF opening a new crossing to screen the aid heading into Gaza. The move is aimed at increasing the inflow of humanitarian assistance into the besieged territory. Hugo Pacheca is the Middle East correspondent with our partners over at the BBC. He joins us now from Jerusalem. Hugo, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. This humanitarian crisis, it just gets worse by the minute. How bad have things become? Yeah, Max, so in the words of the head of the <clears throat> UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, it is catastrophic. It is hell on earth, uh, he said. And we know that uh, uh, Palestinians across Gaza are suffering uh, with uh, widespread shortages of basic supplies. And uh, even in the places that have been designated as uh, safe by the Israeli military, they, these uh, shelters are unable to cope with another wave with uh, tens of thousands of uh, displaced uh, residents who are now uh, being told to evacuate places where the Israeli military is advancing. So it remains a very difficult situation, desperate situation. And the United Nations uh, has said that uh, aid distribution has virtually stopped uh, across Gaza because fighting is so intense uh, that uh, aid organizations and the UN are unable to uh, carry out aid distribution. So a very difficult situation. And again, aid organizations have been warning that those who haven't been killed by bombs may not survive hunger and diseases across Gaza. So desperate. Hugo, you mentioned the UN. The UN General Assembly is looking to pass a resolution demanding an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. What does this all mean and why did the U.S. veto the move last week? Well, I think this is going to be a very symbolic vote in the sense that uh, it is going to show that international pressure is growing on Israel to do more to protect the civilian population in Gaza and uh, calls for a ceasefire are getting louder. So we saw last week that uh, the U.S. vetoed uh, a resolution at the Security Council asking for a, uh, a, a ceasefire and the Americans are sharing the Israeli view that a pause in hostilities right now would benefit Hamas. So the U.S. has been supporting the Israeli view against a ceasefire right now. But we're seeing that countries uh, have been, you know, putting pressure on the Israelis. This resolution today is likely to be approved by the General Assembly. It is a non-binding resolution. So I think the vote here is going to be symbolic. The power here is, you know, the symbolism of countries putting pressure on Israel to say that more needs to be done to protect the civilian population of Gaza, as we're seeing dozens of Palestinians are being killed every day as these uh, attacks continue. And again, residents are saying that no place uh, in Gaza is safe. And again, you know, the humanitarian situation is worsening by the hour. Hugo, both Israel and the U.S. say a ceasefire would only benefit Hamas. What are both sides proposing instead? Yeah, so I think uh, what the Israelis uh, are saying is that they need more time to eliminate Hamas. And uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been saying that this is uh, one of the goals of the Israeli uh, military in Gaza, to eliminate Hamas. I think, uh, look... The Israeli military is extremely powerful, so it is very likely that they're going to be able to destroy the infrastructure being used by uh, Hamas. But one thing uh, is to destroy the infrastructure. Something very different is to destroy the ideology. And I think over the last uh, few days, we've heard a number of uh, different officials familiar with the situation in Gaza warning uh, that uh, the ideology is likely to resist uh, Qatar, which has been acting as a mediator warned on the weekend that, uh, you know, the war risk, uh, risked uh, radicalizing an entire generation across the Middle East. All right. Hugo Bachega from our partners at the BBC. Thank you.